I've uh, I received a few new cubes for Christmas. Um, let's see, my new ones are this one, this one, this one, wait, and this one. And so I've been uh, learning how to solve them, realizing that I'm really, really rusty because um, I haven't really been doing this consistently for a really long time. So I was looking for my algorithm flashcards. I have all these flashcards for different algorithms, etc. And when I opened my cube bag to get those out, I saw all my cool cubes that I kind of forgot I had. I mean, I knew I had cubes, but I, I forgot some of the specific ones. And they're pretty cool. And I just thought I would show them off a little bit. So, um, you know, this is your basic 3x3. Three three. Everyone's seen this. Many, many people know how to solve it. That's that. Um, believe it or not, all of these on the table are all based on this. So if you know how to solve this one, you could potentially solve any of these other ones with just a couple of tricks to understand. So, there's that one. This is the the next simplest one. It's actually even simpler than this one. Um, but the way that you solve this one is uh, it's basically only the corner pieces because it doesn't have a center piece or any edge pieces. It only has corners. And so it solves basically like a three by three, but if you only do the steps that focus on corners. Um, and then, so you have your two by two, your three by three, there's a four by four, often called a, I think a professor's cube maybe. I don't remember, I haven't been in this world for a long time. But anyways, there's this one. And something that's a little different about this one is that it doesn't have a centerpiece because it's an even number on each edge. And so, uh, whereas with a three by three, your centers kind of are your, your uh, anchor. They tell you what color each side should be. With this one, you don't have that, but you do have to get the colors in a specific orientation to the other colors or else it just doesn't come together right. So you have to look at the corners to guide you. Um, and, and then when you solve it, you end up solving, you end up putting together your corners, uh, making sure they're oriented correctly to each other by referencing some of the corner pieces. So you do your corners, which are four pieces, and then you put together edges together. Um, and then you end up solving it like a three by three, um, where you have a center piece and you have your four edges around it, and then you have your four corners. And so from that point on, it's like a three by three. But before you get to that, you have to make your middles, make your edges, and then you can solve it like a three by three. Going up from that, it's a five by five. Um, but luckily with this one, I mean, not luckily, it's, it's how it is. Um, since it does have an odd number of squares on each side, it does have center pieces that remain in their places. And that guides you with knowing what it is. But again, you, uh, you start off by making, putting together your nine by nine squares for your center and then put together three edges at a time to make your edge pieces. And then you're ready to solve it just like a three by three with your center, your four edges, and your four corners. And then going up from that, there is such a thing as a six by six. I don't have one, but I do have a seven by seven. Um, and again, it's and it's missing a green sticker there, but that is green. It's supposed to be green. It just, the sticker is gone. But, um, yeah, I mean, same concept. It does have an odd number, so it has centers. So those guide you. You have to put together a five by five block to make your center, a five piece long edge. And once you have all your centers and all your edges put together, then you solve it exactly like a three by three. Um, let's see. This is a pretty interesting one. It's an apple. Obviously, all of the pieces are the same, or at least the same color, 
but the shape is just slightly different on each piece. So you just, you put it together by matching the shape and just making the shape overall. Um, these four corner pieces are actually exactly the same. So it doesn't even matter. Like you, you can't even tell honestly, which one is which, but as long as you have these four pieces in these four positions, then it's solved. So in a way it's easier than a three by three because like on this one, all of these orange corners, they have to be in this place because it also has yellow and green. And this one also has green and white, etc. So all of these have to be in their exact right place. Whereas with this one, you don't worry about that. You just make the shape look right and you're done. So, but the mechanism of how you solve it is exactly like a three by three. There are many variations of this type of cape. This was actually a souvenir from the Louvre in Paris, I believe, um, that one of my students gave to me. Um, so it has like famous art pieces on each side. Um, so you would think that this would be easy. You know, it's exactly like a three by three cube. But the thing that makes it hard is the picture. So you have to make sure, uh, for instance, if Mona Lisa's mouth is upside down, then it's not solved. So when you're solving this one, you have to make sure that each of the centers is turned the right direction to match the picture. So that's kind of an extra step, but otherwise it's exactly the same as a three by three. Um, let's see. This is a really interesting one. It's called Gear Cube. And you can see it kind of has these gears that move. Um, and it looks really different from a three by three, but it actually, um, it kind of locks you. It's actually easier to solve. And I'll tell you why, because there aren't as many ways that you can mess this one up. Because the way that it moves is exactly the same as if you take a three by three and you go one, two. And that's the only type of move that this can do. One, two. So, um, I, don't, I don't know how to explain this so it makes sense. But basically, because there's only one type of move that it can do, it, um, it, there's fewer ways to mess it up. So it's actually easier to solve this than it is to solve a 3x3, three three, even though it looks kind of more complicated. It's actually not. So, so there's that. Um, this is one of my new ones. It's called a mirror cube. And um, it's kind of similar to this in that all of the sides are exactly the same color. The way that you solve it is by matching dimensions and shapes together. So for instance, this corner, if you put it here, it would look really weird. It just, it, it wouldn't look right because the shape, the dimensions just don't match up. So that's how you solve this, just by matching shapes. Um, and then because of the brushed texture or finish or what, I mean, it's just a sticker, but because it kind of has that look of a brushed texture, it's like a picture cube in that you have to have the brush strokes going in the same direction on each face. So you have to pay attention to the centers and which way the brush stroke is going. Make sure it matches all the ones around it. Um, this is a really cool one. Um, it's called a Mega Minx. And it, oh wow, it looks like some of my stickers are moving. Yeah, I haven't really played with these in a really long time. Um, but as you can see, each side is a pentagon shape instead of a square shape. And because of that, you know, just the way that shapes and 3D works, um, instead of having six sides like a cube, it ends up having 12 sides in total. Um, but because each side is cut into three and it has a center, it actually is surprisingly very similar to a three by three in the way that you solve it. So with a three by three, you normally start by 
uh, making the white cross in the center. Many people know that. So you have the white centerpiece and you try to get white edges on all four sides of it so that it makes a cross shape. With the Mega Minks, you have your center. Here, let's do a white center. Oh, that's gray. White center. And you put all the pieces that are right beside it. So instead of starting with a cross shape, you start with a star shape. And then you have five corners to put in instead of four corners. And you just keep building it up like that. Um, and yeah, it's actually very similar to a three by three, even though it looks completely different. Um, let's see. This is another new cube that I got. Um, and it actually, let me just fix this one really quick. It actually works exactly the same way as a three by three, except that instead of being cut like this, it's actually cut on a diagonal like this. And when I say cut, I mean the, the turning slices kind of go down at a diagonal rather than straight down as a, as a square shape. Um, but you've got your center, you've got your four edges, which actually match up with the, the corners of the cube, but functionally they're like the edges on a regular three by three. And then these edges are functionally like the corners on the three by three. So it works exactly the same way. It just kind of makes your mind think harder and differently. Um, and then because this is like a centerpiece on an edge uh, on, on the cube, it's like the center of a, of a face. So, that, so that's the center. Um, but because it has two sides, you do have to, it's kind of like the picture cube and that you do have to make sure that, that this piece isn't upside down, for instance, because if this, if the green was on this side and the red was on this side, it wouldn't be solved. So this is like exactly like a three by three, but it does have some picture cube elements in that you have to make sure the centers are oriented the correct way. Um, let's see. And then from that, we have this, which is, again, exactly the same, but instead of being cut exactly diagonal, it's cut kind of at a skew a little bit. So it's kind of more like a pinwheel shape than an X shape, if that makes sense. Um, so you got your center, one, two, three, four edges. And then these pieces here are your corner pieces. And when you look at the side of the cube, it looks like it just has two pieces, right? One, two. Um, but it actually, on both of these, the corner is one piece. But on this, the corner is two pieces. And so even though it looks like it has two pieces only, and there's less pieces as you go around this way, it actually has the same number of pieces around as this one and this one because the corners are cut through the diagonal. So um, again, this one works exactly like the three by three, but you do have to pay attention to the orientation of the centers. So in that aspect, it's like a picture cube. Um, then there's this one that's super weird. Um, it looks like it works in a completely different fashion, but as I've examined it, I've actually realized that it too is exactly like a three by three, but just like this one was was uh, cut skewed, skewed. It was cut on the diagonal, and this one was cut on the diagonal, but like not exactly the diagonal, kind of slanted. This one is cut so that it doesn't even have one flat face. So for this one, this piece is the center. So, and, and this piece, um, and this piece. So all of these pieces that have the two colors are the centers and everything rotates around them. So that's really weird. Um, I've solved it one time. It was really hard to kind of wrap my brain around how this works, but again, it works exactly the same as this one. So it's really interesting. It just makes your brain think in a different way. Um, let's see, I've only got two left here. There's this one, which 
actually, I found this in my collection and I had forgotten I had this one, but it's actually almost exactly the same as this new one that I just got. Um, the only difference is that there's an extra piece here on the corners that is different. So if you took this and you know what, actually it's not exactly the same because on this one, huh? Okay. I thought it was, it looks the same like on the white face, but this one is cut perpendicular to the white and yellow faces straight down. This one is not. It's cut on a diagonal all the way through. So I guess in some ways it's more like this one. I don't know. But anyways, um, all in all, it basically also works like a three by three, just has a few weird variations, but yeah, it's really cool. Um, So there's that, and wow, I can't even figure out how to move it. Yeah, I'm going to have to play with this one more because I've kind of forgotten how it works. And then the final one in my collection, I actually kind of made this one myself out of two other cubes. This one is called a Siamese cube, and um, it works very similarly to a 3x3, but there's certain ways that you can't turn it just because of the fact that it's glued together. So you can't, you can't turn, uh, you can turn the top layer and you can turn the two side layers and that's all. And then you flip it over and again, you can turn the top and you can turn the two sides, but you can't turn it through the middle here this way. Um, and you can't, yeah, I guess you can turn all of these like that kind of, I don't know, but yeah, but again, it's very similar to the three by three, just limited moves. So in a way it's actually easier to solve because there's limited, because there's limited moves. There's also limited ways to mess it up. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if you're interested, but if you watch to the end, I guess you are. So Cool. Let's talk sometime. Those are the cubes that I have in my collection that I'm able to find right now.